Well, most of us look at the holiday season as one of joy and love, but that's not the case for everyone. Many times, if someone is in an abusive relationship, the holidays often make it worse. The work is hectic, the schedule, the family commitments, and of course, financial stress can turn what is supposed to be the best time of the year into one of the worst. Yeah, very dangerous, in fact. We know physical, mental, emotional abuse, we know about that. Have you heard of pet abuse? This is when a partner threatens to harm or take away your pet so they can continue to control you. I'm talking to a very brave woman right now who knows this and the other forms of abuse as well. Here's Melissa and her story. Even the night before my wedding, my, my friend, she still reminds me, she was like, we were gonna give you the out. You said no. Well, my parents paid all this money. All these people came out of town. It'll be okay. It did not end okay. Melissa married her college boyfriend. She says the abuse started with him yelling and throwing things, and then it escalated. He was on top of me, punching me, and I went to a friend's house and was like, I'm ready. They did not move as quickly as I wanted, so I was like, it's okay, I'll go home. So I packed the dog up and went home. And then it happened again. He dragged me down the hall into our bathroom and strangled me over the tub, which he had done many times before. My fear is, was that eventually he wouldn't let go. She says that was the moment she knew she had to get out, but she couldn't forget what happened every other time she attempted to leave. If I left, he'd be like, I'm gonna go take these dogs to the pound. That was a big fear. When I went to the cops, one of his comments was, why don't you just leave? And I said, I can't. I have animals. She was smart. She knew she needed to plan her escape. But leaving is the most dangerous time for a victim. Statistics show that's when abusive situations most often turn deadly. And Melissa says in those moments she was being attacked, she knows even her dogs felt helpless. They were so afraid that they were never really around during those events. They would just go hide. Melissa did leave. She's had help from the Hope and Healing Survivor Resource Center in Akron, who also helped her pets. She's in therapy and says she's now living in freedom, but admits she still has memories that haunt her, and so do her pups. And now even my, my dog, I have a friend come over and kind of mess with him, and he just, like, sits there and just shakes. And I tell him, you know why he does that? He's not, he's afraid. Still, even a year and a half later, he's afraid. I feel like I did take a long time to get out, but the timing was perfect. I've been able to find who I am. Um, I found my purpose, which I'm really sure that it's to help others because I will openly discuss this with anybody just in case Somebody hears me. She is so brave. So if you or someone you know is in need of support, the National Domestic Violence Hotline can be reached at 1-800-799-7233. CEO of the Hope and Healing Survivor Resource Center in Akron says there's one of the very few in the state, they are, in the state of Ohio, where domestic violence survivors can actually bring their pet into the shelter. In fact, the shelter has received a federal grant to build a pet shelter on their property. Because when you can't leave with your pet, a lot of times you just don't leave. On 3 News at 6, we're talking to that CEO, in fact, who told us about a form of abuse that I had never heard of before, but one that they say they're seeing more frequently now. 3 News at 5, we'll be right back.